In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and warm welcome to Carmel Light Reflection on the Day's Readings. It's the 3rd of September, Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. It's the first Friday of the month and today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Gregory the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church. Over to Larissa to give us more details about his life and mission. Saint Gregory the Great, a central figure of the medieval Western Church and one of the most admired popes in history, is commemorated in the ordinary form of the Roman Catholic liturgy, today on September 3rd. Born near the middle of the 6th century into a noble Roman family, with a strong legacy of Christian faith, Gregory received a classical education in liberal arts and the law. He also had a strong religious formation from his devout family, particularly from his mother Sylvia, who is also a canonized saint. He was related to two previous popes, his aunts were nuns, and his parents joined cloisters in their later years. By around the age 30, Gregory had advanced to a high political office in Rome during what was nevertheless a period of marked decline for the city, as Rome was now only a shell of its former glory. He was the chief administrative official of the city, responsible for finances, police, provisioning, and public works, an experience that helped him hone his administrative skills, and together with his personal wealth, gave him the opportunity to create six monasteries. Yet, Gregory remained dissatisfied, and upon his father's death in 574, some time after becoming the prefect of the former imperial capital, Gregory chose to leave the civil administration to become a monk during the rise of the Benedictine order. He converted his house into a monastery and retired to a life of contemplation and prayer. During these years, the happiest in Gregory's life, he began a detailed study of the scriptures. Here he also ruined his health with fasting, a sacrifice that would precipitate his early death. In reality, however, the new monk's great career in public life was yet to come. His administrative skills did not remain unappreciated. After three years of strict monastic life, he was called personally by Pope Pelagius II to assume the office of a deacon in Rome. From Rome, he was dispatched by the Pope to Constantinople to seek aid from the Emperor for Rome's civic troubles and to aid in resolving the Eastern Church's theological controversies. He returned to Rome in 586 after six years of service as the papal representative to the Eastern Church and Empire. In 589, a flood destroyed the grain reserves of Rome, instigating a famine and then a plague that swept through Rome, followed by the death of Pope Pelagius II the next year. Gregory, then serving as abbot in a monastery, reluctantly accepted his election to replace him as the Bishop of Rome. Despite his initial reluctance, however, Pope Gregory began working tirelessly to reform and solidify the Roman liturgy, the disciplines of the Church, the military and economic security of Rome, and the Church's spreading influence in Western Europe. To deal with the famine, Gregory instituted a city-wide penance, fed people from the church's granaries, and organized systematic relief for the poor. Gregory then set himself reforming the church. He removed high officials for pride and misdeeds, enforced celibacy, replaced lay officers with monks, and initiated a reorganization of the patrimony of Peter, the vast land holdings of the church. The efficient and humane management of these estates brought in the revenue necessary to run the church 
as well as perform tasks the imperial government was neglecting. As Pope Gregory brought his political experience at Rome and Constantinople to bear, in the task of preventing the Catholic Church from becoming subservient to any of the various groups struggling for control of the former imperial capital, as the former abbot of a monastery, he strongly supported the Benedictine movement as a bedrock of the Western Church. He sent missionaries to England and is given much of the credit for the nation's conversion. In undertaking these works, Pope Gregory saw himself as the servant of the servants of God. He was the first of the bishops of Rome to popularize the now traditional papal title, which referred to Christ's command that those in the highest position of leadership should be the last of all and the servant of all. Even as he undertook to consolidate papal power and shore up the crumbling Roman West, St. Gregory the Great maintained a humble sense of his mission as a servant and pastor of souls from the time of his election until his death in 604. He is one of the four great Latin doctors of the Church, along with Ambrose, Augustine and Jerome, and upon his death he was named a saint by popular acclaim. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with a spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we continue our reflection on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 33 to 39. Or reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Pharisees and the scribes said to Jesus, the disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one takes a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skins and no one after drinking old wine desires new for he says the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, in our reflection on the Gospel, we see the trap that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law set when they contrast the fasting and praying of the disciples John and of the Pharisees with the eating and drinking of the disciples Jesus. Without really asking the question, they want to provoke Jesus into creating a controversy regarding the important Jewish laws and traditions of fasting. Jesus Christ tells us that there is a time in life to fast and pray, and that there is a time to eat and drink. What he means is that the same person who prays and fasts is the one who eats and drinks. We experience this in daily life. 
we contemplate the simple joy of a family perhaps of our own family and we see that at another time tribulation visits that family the subjects are the same but everything has its own time can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them but the days will come everything has its moment under the sky there is a time for everything a time to tear and a time to mend these words spoken by the wise author of the book of ecclesiastes almost coincide with the simple parable of the mended cloak of today's gospel and they certainly coincide in some way with our own experience the mistake is that when it's time to mend we tear and that when we need to tear we mend why do we do it because we think we know what's right without giving god the time and the opportunity to speak to us and that is when nothing goes well we know that like jesus christ through the passion and death we will reach the glory of the resurrection and that any other path is not the path of god specifically simon peter is reproached when he wants to distance the lord from the only path far be it from you lord he said this shall never happen to you but jesus turned and said to peter get behind me satan You are a stumbling block to me for you do not have in mind the things of God but the things of men If we can enjoy some moments of peace and joy let us take advantage of them Certainly there will be moments of hard fasting The only difference is that fortunately we will always have the bridegroom with us and therefore even in times of fasting we will always have the christian joy in our hearts the joy that comes not from the changing circumstances of daily life but from the unchanging and unconditional love of god for us may we never let the fleeting troubles of this earthly life take away the lasting presence of the joy of the lord within our hearts lord i know that life has its ups and downs moments of rejoicing and moments of weeping a time to feast and a time to fast help me accept all these willingly not hesitatingly as part of the road you choose for me to traverse never forgetting that at every step of the way you are by my side nourishing me with the joy of being loved by you amen brothers and sisters we have psalm 100 as the responsorial today The psalmist gives a glimpse into the joy that was experienced by pilgrims once they had arrived at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. Being in the presence of God was a time of great excitement. It was something which was truly awesome for those who were able to come to the house of the Lord especially for the first time. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response Come before the Lord singing for joy. Come before the Lord singing for joy. Cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Come before the Lord singing for joy. Know that he the Lord is God. He made us we belong to him we are his people the sheep of his flock 
come before the lord singing for joy enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with songs of praise give thanks to him and bless his name come before the lord singing for joy indeed how good is the lord eternal his merciful love he is faithful from age to age come before the lord singing for joy glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen prayer for relief from the corona virus almighty and merciful god who show your love to all creation everywhere hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the corona virus in various parts of the world we come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine we pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic we pray that the vaccine be available for all our people even the poor and those in rural areas we pray for doctors nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen pray for god's blessing now may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister every year we publish bible diaries in three languages english konkani and kannada and this diary includes all the readings the psalm and a short reflection then a prayer and a resolution for the day also this diary includes the daily prayers the rosary the litanies novena and other prayers to all the saints and at various occasions we invite paid sponsors for these bible diaries you can choose any language and you can sponsor the pages maybe on the occasion of your birthday or birthday of your family members or wedding anniversaries or remembering someone on their death anniversary we will print those names and intention in the page that you sponsor and we pray for those intentions during this carmel light reflections and also those who use the diary will pray for those intentions the cost of the paid sponsorship is 1000 rupees per name or per page and it's not only a aid to print those diaries but also through this project we help the children of the blind in their education this is not the new venture for the past 4 years we have been doing this and you have been very supportive and encouraging us so this year also we request you to sponsor the pages at the earliest you can send your details and when once the diaries are printed we will send the diaries to your home address according to the number of pages that you sponsor if you sponsor four diaries 
we will send four. If you sponsor five, we will send five. Now you'll be asking why four or five? You can use, also you can give to your friends or neighbors or relatives. So send your details to my number. I am Father Stephen Pereira and my number is 9481263229. I repeat, 9481263229. My dear brother and sister, we thank Reverend Father Noel Dikunna for sharing his reflection with us. And we remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Alvin Menezes from Dubai, Dolphy Pinto from Kulshaker, Mangalore, Wilton Suarez from Dubai, Denston Narona from Daman. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Bridget Sequeira from Ferrar. May the Lord grant her eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.